Hello Tab Nation, it's Sam here, and today we're going to be doing one of my most popular videos and expanding on it, which is Pullover's Macro Creator. You guys seem to really enjoy using it, so we're going to do another video specifically looking at image search, pixel search, and OCR, optical character recognition, and we're just going to see how we do that using the Pullover's Macro Creator. In my last video, which I will link in the description below, I talk about how this is a great tool for when you need to learn auto hotkeys and you're just getting started or maybe you need a script written really fast in an emergency it's a great idea to use this but i always recommend kind of moving away from it after a while learning how to code on your own because maco creator really grabs a lot of extra stuff that you don't actually need and so coding yourself your code's going to be way cleaner and way more reliable so definitely uh something i recommend watching my other videos kind of learning but it is a great starting tool so i'm gonna go ahead and launch that and if there's something i don't really cover in my first video or in this video that you would like me to go a little bit more in depth to definitely net, let me know in the comments below i'll be doing probably a small little series about the pullover macro creator so shout out to the guy who made this because it is awesome it's very well designed and it works pretty good all right so we're going to start with image search and that is going to be this icon right here a little orange thing with some mountains and i guess that's a sun we're going to click that, and we get this little pop-up here. So we're going to be looking for an image. So let me find an image here. We'll use my Reddit card thingy here. Um, let me move this down actually a little bit so we get a view of something. All right, let's go back to that. So the first thing we're going to have here is our region, and that's where do we want to search. If you leave it how it is when it pops up, it's going to search your entire screen, which can be very heavy on your system. So if you know kind of like, hey, I'm really only searching in the middle part of my screen, you're definitely going to want to get coordinates. And you just do that by clicking these three little dots here. It's going to minimize. And then you're going to have this little uh, box here, tooltip. And you're going to right click in the region you want to search. So I'm going to just search, kind of just, I'm going to grab a random area, this whole area right here. Let's search that whole area. Now, the next part is what are we searching for? We're searching for an image. And you can either upload a picture if you already have it, and that's just going to open Explorer, pick your thing, or you can use the snapshot button here. So we're just going to do it the simple way, which is the snapshot. Once again, it's going to minimize. And let's say I just want to look for like my hair or something. I want to look at my hair. So I'm going to highlight my hair. It's going to come back. And that's the image right there that we're looking for. Basically the part in my hair. Um, you know, if it's found, what do we do? Well, we're going to continue. For the most part, everybody's going to do continue. If it's in a loop, you might use a break, which is fine. But for the most part, people are going to use continue, I believe. And we're going to add an if statement. If this picture is found, do something. Now, what are our output variables going to be? And that's basically saying, where did we find the top left of this corner here of the picture? So by default, it's find X, or found X, found Y. You can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to leave it like this just because that's all I'm using is just those single variables. But if you're using multiples, even if it's like found X1, found X2, you should definitely remember to do that. We have this little checkbox here, adjust coordinates to the center of the image. So instead of grabbing right here at the top left, it's going to grab the middle of the picture's coordinates. That's useful to use if you're going to be doing like a mouse move or and clicking on it. I'm just going to keep it with moving to the top corner here where that orange section is. <clears throat> uh, we're going to repeat it until it's found. That way, if it doesn't find it right away, it's going to keep trying. And because we it is a little heavy, we're going to put a delay in there of five seconds. You can play around with this and see what really works. And that basically means it, if it doesn't find it, it's going to wait five seconds, look again. And everything else looks pretty good. You know, you can change the coordinate settings, which I talk about in other videos, but we're just going to keep it at window. You can, uh, you can adjust it to your whole screen or just the client of a specific thing. Uh, but we're just going to do this. Pretty pretty easy here. Nothing too fancy today. 
So there we go. We now have our list of everything that we have so far. Now over here is where your actual auto hotkey code is going to display. Uh, that will display once we actually push play. You can make it come up earlier, but that's the easiest way to test your script first. Now, if the image gets found, we're going to move our mouse to that spot. So we're just going to do mouse move, which is that little mouse button all the way to the left here in the second column or row. We're going to move it, and then we need to move it to that X and Y coordinates. So that was the found, found X, found Y. Now, if you're going to be using variables, make sure you're putting them in percent signs here. That lets it know that it, you're actually doing a variable versus actual coordinate numbers. And if you forget, it actually has a reminder right down here. Use percent for variables. Example, clipboard. And we're not really going to touch on this. We're just doing a simple mouse move, so it's nothing special. Now that went right there. We want to move it into the if, so we're just going to drag it down. Now it's on the if. You'll see that it's a little bit indented. That means that it's inside the if. And then let's just display a message box saying, I found it. And you can put a title on there. We'll just call it found. And that's just what's going to appear in the title bar up there. Once again, let's move it into our if. And there we go. So we are ready to go. So up here, we got our play button. That's going to run our code. And it's going to minimize this window. And you'll see what it does. So my mouse is over here. And there it went. <clears throat> Moved my mouse right there to that orange corner. Got that message box saying I found it. And as you saw, it's a little slow. So, you know, be patient with it. You know, it, it can be a lot of work for your computer to try to handle that kind of stuff. All right. So that was image search. Whoops. Let's get out of that. There we go. You can also push refresh. For some reason, my code didn't display like it normally does. But here's the code I could copy and paste or save and, you know, run that as an actual script. If I didn't want to have to use pullovers macro creator every single time, I could actually have a real script and then turn it into an executable if I wanted to share it with people. Did a video on that. Definitely check it out if that's something you're interested in. All right, we're going to highlight all this and we're going to delete it all. Once again, go into the mountain picture there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get some coordinates here. Right click, drag. We're going to search that area. And we're going to drop down here to pixel search. And as you saw, that changed to a little drop uh, dripper thing, whatever they're called. We're going to click that. Kind of the same thing, but this time we're going to right click. So. Let's say I want to click on my little antenna thing here, because that, that little tan color is kind of the only place that appears on here. So we're going to do that. And there's our preview. That's what it's looking for. Now, down here, we have what's called variations. Right now, with the, it being zero, it's looking for this color and this color only. Like, the hex has to be exactly this color. But let's say we want to give it a little lean way. Maybe if it's this color, but maybe a little bit lighter or darker we'll still consider it a match. You can knock it up to like five, 10, you know, play around with it to see what the sensitivity is gonna be. But we're just gonna look at zero. We want it to be the exact color here. Something to remember also with image search and pixel search is if the color or the picture it's looking for is displayed multiple times somewhere on your screen within that area that you're searching, it's gonna find the first one and automatically trigger that if. So just remember that. We're going to keep everything the same here. Here's that hex number right there that it automatically got for us. If found, continue. We're going to add an if statement. We're going to repeat until that kind of stuff. So we're going to push OK. And then for this one, we'll just do a mouse move. Again, we're going to use those exact same variables. Found x and found y keeping it simple here don't really need to do anything else here i'm fine with just moving the mouse there and let's add a message box i moved the mouse to the tan color 
tannish, whatever. Tan found. Now, obviously, with your if, you're probably not going to be using message boxes. You're going to probably do clicks or, you know, stuff like that. Press enter at this spot, that kind of stuff. Now we got to make sure we move these up. So we're going to move our mouse into the if. We're going to move our message box into the if. We're going to refresh. Here's our new code. So there's our pixel search code right there. If you manually want to change it, you definitely can. This is the code we're going to save to an AHK file. And let's go ahead and let's run that. So we're going to push play. It's going to minimize and it's going to start looking. Now look how much faster that was. It snapped my mouse almost instantly, got that message box. That's because pixel search is so much faster than image search. Uh, really the drawback from pixel search versus using image search is this color right here. As you can see, my face is also that color, but it found here first versus my face because it's going you know, basically row by row searching the pixels. So that could be a problem if you're playing like a video game or something, is if that color is displayed in multiple areas on your search area, you could get the wrong hits that you're not actually looking for. If that does happen, then I recommend switching over to image search, even though it can be a little bit slower. It's really about what you're doing. So I always recommend trying pixel search first. If that doesn't work, then you're probably going to have to switch over to image search, unfortunately. Um, both of these can be a little buggy sometimes, it really depends, you know, especially in video games, the lighting can change, which technically changes the pixel color. Uh, that's where that kind of variation thing can come in useful. Um, but yeah, they're not very reliable. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they work perfectly. Like here, I'm doing something very simple, very small area of my screen that I'm searching. It's not a moving image, so it works perfectly fine for me. But if you're trying to do like something in a video or a game, you might run into some problems. It might only have like a 70% accuracy or something like that. Just keep that in mind. The next one is OCR, basically text recognition. This is probably one of the coolest things. I love using this. It's great for reading PDFs, pictures. So as you see here, there's text right here, right? I'm trying to highlight it. I can't. Well, that's because it's an image. But I want to be able to grab at least the first part of my name, let's say. So once again, we're going to jump over to that mountain scene there. Okay, we're going to get our area. We're just going to search this little area. That's all the text I need. Just remember that because if you try to search the entire screen, you're going to get a lot of text. I mean, you're going to get like index, action, details, file, macro, commands, you're going to get all the text. So definitely try to like know where the text is supposed to be displayed. That's going to help you a lot in just getting solely the information you need. Drop down, we're going to select image to text, OCR. Our output variable, when it gets this text, reads it, converts it to actual text. How do we want to save it? So we'll name it name got. Why not? <laughs> And honestly, that's really all we're going to be doing. There, all of this stuff, as you can see, has been grayed out. It's because we're not going to be using it. You can put a delay in there, but we just want to get the name and we're done. So we're going to say OK. And then we want to see that information. Now you could save it to a file, an INI file, send it somewhere into another window using comms or send commands. But we're just going to display it in a message box. So we're going to put name is equal or equal sorry it's hard to see my keyboard with the mic in the way and i think i said it was name got so once again if you're using a variable make sure you put it enclosed in the percent signs title i mean you really don't have to put a title if you don't it's just going to default to whatever your script name is so we're just going to leave that blank i don't really care we're going to push okay so a lot simpler we're not really doing a whole lot here and as you can see the code is very very clean compared to the other ones we did. It's two lines of code. <clears throat> so by default, we have it in English here. If you're using another language that you're try trying to read, definitely use uh, whatever the three digit, I uh, can't think of the word, abbreviation is for that language and make sure it is installed on your computer or it won't work. And uh, yeah, this could be useful also, like I'm saying, like you could put in here, like instead of English, you could have it 
read uh, Turkish. And then, you know, there's libraries out there that use like Google to convert text and then have it like auto translate. So that's something I could be see a lot of people using this for, uh, using it to read foreign languages and then using Google Translate to turn it into a thing, which you can use their API for. So you don't even have to open Google. You can actually make auto hotkeys connect, which I did another video on, on how to do that. So definitely check that out. All right. So once again, this isn't always reliable. It kind of depends on the font. So let's go ahead and push that play. So see, it didn't get anything. So let's try that again. All right, let's see here. All right, let's make sure we did everything correct here. Sometimes I might have name got percent signs. Let's redo the area just to be on the safe side. All right. There we go. So I might have made my area just a little bit too small, but I'm happy that that, that kind of happens so you can see that it, it can be very picky. Um, you might want to expand the area a little bit larger than getting exactly that spot, but it got uh, it got it pretty well. You know, the got all the way up to that nine, which I wasn't even sure if it was going to get the nine because I didn't quite enclose that, I think, in the box. But yeah, we got that. Another thing, too, that can be unreliable besides just the font type, if it's, you know, like some fancy, like it's not going to grab cursive uh, font. Uh, so like this, is, these are black letters on a white background. Perfect. But if this background was maybe like a dark gray with the black letters, there's a good chance it would have a lot of troubles trying to read what is there. But yeah, a lot cleaner. Um, sometimes you might, if you're getting a lot of text, you might want to add a sleep in here. To do that, you just push this little pause orange button here. And you just, uh, you can change it to seconds, minutes, milliseconds. I'm used to using milliseconds. So we'll use 5,000 milliseconds, which is equal to five seconds. And, oh, okay, it automatically went there. So here, what we're going to do is push play. So grab the text. It's going to wait five seconds. And then it's going to display that message box. There we go. All right. If you guys have any questions on something maybe I didn't cover or want me to go more in depth having to do with these three different things in this program, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, what you want to see in the next Pullover Macro Creator video. Definitely would like to dive a lot deeper in this because you guys seem to really like it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification because I'm throwing two videos at you guys every single week. And I hope you enjoy them, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.